so that you can understand the relationship between human institutions, places, and materials, and how you can reveal all three at once. Okay, I'm going to start with this story. This is for students. So, and this, this is personal. Um, this story, I grew up in a small Appalachian coal town. Um, it was an absolutely devastated environment. It was strip mine, burned, deep mine, slag heaps of, of old coal everywhere. I actually grew up thinking that snow automatically turned black within about three hours of falling on the ground. I didn't know that snow stayed white. I thought it just turned black. And, um, Oh, no. I'd rather they be looking here than me. <laughs> Maybe turn on that <laughs> thing there, that light there. Lights on me? Yeah, just so oh, I can I see you. It's okay. It's okay. Anyhow, so, so then in uh, 1974, I moved to Bainbridge Island, Washington. And it was like moving to paradise. It had 24 miles of shoreline. Uh, the ecosystem is fairly similar to here. Beautiful beaches. Uh, the island is about the size of Manhattan. Had about 8,000 people lived on it. Well, now there are 24,000 people who live on that island. So it's grown three times over since I've been there. And as I had a practice there, uh, I would I bicycle from my house to the office, and literally. At least once a year, I'd have to change my route where some architect had created some wonderful architectural monument that devastated another small part of my island. And uh, this all came to a head for me personally in the early 80s um, when I got my first big commission. It was to design a house for some fairly wealthy people. Uh, and I went out. And at that point in my career, I'd gotten in the habit of going out and surveying land myself, not for boundaries, but for topography and shooting the tr where the trees were. And I did that mainly because I just hated being in the office. I liked being outside. Nothing very intellectual about it, but that's why I, I just like being out. So I went out to this property, and of all things, it had been, by dumb luck, had been the only property on Bainbridge Island that had, been not, had not been clear cut in the 1880s. So it had an old growth forest on it. The trees were six to seven feet in diameter. The property was about 200 feet wide by 2,000 feet deep going off the water. And I was stunned because I had not started my hiking in the Olympics yet. I had not seen a forest like this in my life. It was so beautiful. And I literally, this is going to really sound stupid, but I was literally hugging these trees. They were so cool. And. Um, and so I went, we spotted all the trees, and I, I surveyed it all, and came back to the office, designed my first really big commission building. I think it was $400,000, which is a lot of money. It's actually it's a lot of money now. It's a real lot of money then. And um, the owners came in, and they looked at the drawings, and I was showing them what I designed, how I fitted the building into the trees. And, and they said, what are these big black spots all over the drawings? And I said, well, those are the trees. And the owner's wife turned to me and said, you know, I had a lawyer offer us $4,000 for those trees, and I can buy better draperies with those. And I said, no, 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 you don't want to cut those trees down. I'm going to make this fit. And then, as I've been known to do on occasion, I began to bicker with my clients. <laughs> and um, I bickered with them and they said, no, look, let me show you. You know, you're, you're going to have great light quality. You're on the water. Light's going to get double light when you're on the water because it comes from below and from above. And, and, let, and I'm going to show you how wonderful it'll be. This building will feel like it's always been there, like it, the trees grew up around it. And they bickered with me some more and left. And then um, about a week later, um, the owner's wife called me up and said, can you come out and meet me at the site? Now, she no longer called it the land, and I should have known something at that point, because our language changes things. She said, meet me at the site. So I borrowed a car, went out there, to watch the last logging truck leave the property and sing 2,000 feet by 200 feet of turned soil with the roots of the trees in giant piles on fire. And, um, and the owner's wife's waiting there for me, and I get out of the car, and, and I'm not